Hey, I'm Tesla, and in this tutorial for Unreal Engine 4, we're going to be taking a look at a character need system. We'll be looking at things like functions, UMG bindings, timers, custom events, parent and child classes, and some other stuff as well. Okay, so let's jump right into this. We're going to open up our character blueprint and create our first need, which is going to be hunger for this tutorial. We're going to add in a new variable. We're just going to call this hunger. We're going to change it from a boolean to a float. We're going to change the category from default to, let's change it to uh, needs. Okay, and because we do this, it goes into its own little section here. So if we create more needs, like first and all that, it's going to go into this section. Okay, so if we hit compile, we can change the default value to uh, 100, which will be our maximum value basically for the hunger. And what we're going to do now is to set up two functions for the hunger. We're going to add a function for increasing the value and then decreasing the value as well. So let's drag out the hunger. Let's choose a get. Let's drag this out and throw in a float plus float. We can drag this out and use a clamp. And we're going to, we're going to clamp it between zero and your maximum value, which is 100 for me. Okay, and then we can just drag out the hunger once more and choose a set on it. And connect those up like that. So this is our first function that we're going to collapse here. It's going to be the increase hunger value. So we're going to right click on it, collapse it to a function and call it increase hunger value. Okay. But when we call this function, what we're going to do is like we want to put in how much we want to increase it by. So we're going to expose a float on here. So we're going to add in an input. We're going to call this increase amount. We're going to change it from a boolean to a float as well. So you can see you can actually choose how much you want to increase it by. And then if we go into the function, we can connect up the increase amount to that plus. So that overrides it. Okay, and that's all we need to do for this function. That is our increase hunger value function. If you want to change the default value uh, for this float here, you can just drop down your input there and change that default value there. Okay. So what we'll do, we'll do the same again, but with the decrease hunger value. We'll drag out the hunger. We're going to choose a get. We're going to drag out this. Use a float subtract float. We will clamp it again. And we'll clamp it between 0 and your maximum value, which will be 100. And then we'll choose a set hunger as well. And then we can select all of it, right click on it, collapse it to a function. This is going to be decrease hunger value. And we're going to select the function and add in a new float input. It's already set to a float. That's great. And we can just call this decrease amount. Okay. And we will go into the function and connect those up like that. Now, what we want to do is expose our hunger value on the HUD, maybe using a progress bar to show uh, the value increasing and decreasing, just to make sure that it works. So we're going to go set that up now. So let's go to the content browser. Okay, so in the content browser, let's right click on this content folder and just add in a new folder and let's call this UI. In this folder, we're going to create a new asset and it's going to be a widget blueprint, which is under user interface. So let's go ahead and do that and let's call this character HUD. Let's open up the character HUD and all we're going to do in here is just throw in a simple progress bar, okay? And we're going to just stretch it out a bit. We can rename the progress bar as well because it goes to progress bar 69. Let's call it progress bar hunger. Okay. And how this progress bar works, it goes between 0 and 1. Okay. It's going to fill up like that. So just be aware it goes between 0 and 1. And our value is between 0 and 100. And just next to this, you have a bind button. If we click this and create a binding for this, we can throw in our hunger value in here, it creates a function for you that will constantly update. Okay, so uh, it's got a, it's not got the greatest name at the moment, it's got get progress bar hunger percent zero. Let's just rename this, let's select the function, hit F2 and call this update hunger. Great. Uh, to get our hunger value in here, we're going to have to right click and just type in get player character. We can drag out from the player character and cast to your blueprint, which is first person character for me and we can drag out the return pin from the as first person character and just get the hunger value okay and if I hold down left alt and left click on this pin it will just break it and we want to connect it up like this okay just be aware that we can't just throw this straight in there 
like that because this goes between 0 and 100 this goes between 0 and 1 so what we're going to do is just drag out this hunger value here and use a nifty little function called map range and we're going to use map range clamped so the input value goes between 0 and 100 which comes from our hunger output value goes between 0 and 1 for that progress bar okay that's all we need to do so what we're going to do is display this uh, HUD blueprint uh, on well, when we start the game through the character blueprint and we're also going to just set up some keys so we can increase and decrease the hunger just to make sure it works okay so let's navigate back to our character blueprint and what we want to do is set it up so when we start the game the HUD is going to be displayed immediately so to do that we need an event begin play node so we can right click and type that in or we can just hold down P and left click okay so on begin play we'll drag this out we'll create a widget and the class is going to be our character HUD class and we can promote this to a variable if you want to store it as a reference let's just call this HUD now that's going to create it straight away but it's not going to be visible so we want to add it to the viewport so let's just drag out this return value here and type in add to viewport okay uh, let's just make sure that works so let's just compile this save it jump in the game and there it is it's displaying there right so let's just set it up so when we press T we can increase the hunger value by let's say five points and when we press Y we can decrease it just so we know that this works okay so I'm gonna just jump in the game press Y a couple of times you can see it's going down and it clamps it there and I can press T and it immediately starts filling it back up again okay great so what we want to do is probably add in a function so this decreases over time okay and we can do that on the begin play so what we can do is drag this out just here and use a set timer by uh, let's use set timer by event okay and let's create a new custom event here let's just right click type in custom event and oh, not that one custom event add custom event let's call this uh, decrease hunger uh, let's call it over time or something like that horrible event name but we'll, we'll work with that and let's just connect these delegates just here like that and let's say it's looping and it fires every second so every second let's bring in a new decrease hunger value and let's decrease it by five okay and we can hit compile save that and jump in the game and test it out and you can see that my hunger really quickly but it's decreasing over time okay so what we'll probably want to do is set up some basic pickups so we can replenish our hunger right so let's create a new blueprint class let's just right click hit blueprint class select actor and this is going to be a base hunger pickup okay we can open this up so this is the parent class and we'll create some child classes as well but with this uh, I'm gonna use a collision system with this rather than a line trace system because I've done that quite a bit I mean you could probably figure it out by looking at the other interaction tutorials that I've done but for this we're just gonna add in a new component use a sphere collision we're gonna make this the root as well by just selecting it and dragging it up and we're also gonna add in a static mesh and this is going to be our food mesh slot okay we're not going to put anything as the mesh for this parent class but we will as the child so we can hit compile here go over to the event graph um, we can remove all this if we want to and then we can say well if we right click add in an event collision begin overlap so when something overlaps with it we want to check to make sure it is the player character we can drag this out and cast to first person character if it is our player character well we can then drag this out and increase our hunger value there with that function that we created and then we will want to destroy the actor as well to represent picking up this hunger pickup okay but here we can actually right click on this and create it as a well, promote it to a variable and this can be increase amount 
what we could also do is expose this value so when we drag these into the map we can set different values just on the details panel in the map okay so we'll just close this we will right click on this and create a child blueprint class and this is going to be um, let's make it a chair food source because we want to eat some chairs right cool so in the food mesh slot we can just use a chair and we want to make sure that it doesn't collide because we want to just use a sphere collision there and then in the class defaults we could say that the food increase amount is to let's say 30 okay we can drag that in there but then say we want another one so let's just right click and create another child blueprint class this could be uh, just sphere food source and I can just change this mesh slot to a sphere and we want to make sure that we have no collision on this as well and then the class defaults increase amount could be 50 but we don't have to do that here we could do it on a per map instance level so we could drag out the sphere food source and in the details I can actually change this to you know it's defaults 50 but maybe I want it to just to be 25 for that one and this one could be 75 so I can jump into the game you can see that my hunger is depleting as well and then we can just pick up these pickups to replenish them okay and we'll probably want to take a look at uh, creating an event of some sort of when your hunger hits zero we could make something happen so let's take a look at that next let's come back into our character blueprint okay so let's take a look at this decrease hunger value function let's make it so we can check when it's uh, the hunger is depleted so we could say when this is getting called to decrease the hunger value we could say equal float so if it's equal zero we could use that with a branch I can hold down B and left click to do that and just connect those up like that okay and if it's not equal to zero then we can just yep that's fine we can go back to there but then we could make something happen when it's equals to zero here so let's let's take a look we could uh, say uh, we could set up a damage system so we could say event any damage and we could subtract health if we want to here uh, but we could do something like uh, get player controller and use a play camera shake so we could just shake the camera when our hunger is depleted and then if we had health, well, I'll tell you what, let's set up some health as well just to show you how it would work, let's just right click on the damage here promote it to a variable, let's call this health let's change its default value to 100 okay and then we will want to, on the damage, just drag it out and use a subtract let's just move this over here, it's getting a bit messy and I'm just going to break these links so we can see clearly okay so with the damage um, well we don't want it there actually we want it so the health goes into here and then we'll subtract the damage from it so if our health is 100 and then we take 30 damage we subtract 30 from 100 rather than uh, 100 from 30 okay and then again we'll want to definitely clamp this between 0 and 100 and then we will set the health there okay and then we can use the client play camera shake on this and we could create a little uh, camera shake class for that but just looking at this decrease value here we can then right click here and do an apply damage damaged actor we could just drag that out and use self and the true can go into that uh, damage we could just set that to 10 and then you could d uh, go into your HUD and set up the same process for having a health bar as we did with the hunger bar okay and let's just create a new camera shake class for this as well let's just right click here go to blueprint class and expand all classes and let's do a camera shake select that there and let's just call this uh, hungry shake we can open this up and on the class defaults, uh, the duration, let's just set this to uh, 0.3. Rotation oscillation, let's use the pitch, let's set the amplitude to 1, frequency to 10, and we could do that on the yaw as well. Amplitude 1, 
frequency 10. Okay, we can compile that, close it, go into our first person character here, change the class to the, the hungry shake. And do I still have my decrease so I can speed that up? Yep, okay. So let's just close this, jump into the game, uh, decrease our hunger a bit, and let's see what happens when it hits zero. So you can see it's, it's still playing on that timer, but because our hunger is zero, it's actually applying damage to us now and applying that camera shake. Okay, so I think that's it for this tutorial. I uh, hope it helps. If you'd like me to work on your project or if you're interested in private tutoring, please feel free to contact me via my website. Thank you.